Okay, so Blakemore and Cooper kittens inside um, cylindrical um, environments. Yes. Uh, okay, let's crack on. I am a fan of kittens, as I'm sure many of you are, um, but they do defend the ethics of this study quite vehemently. Um, no kittens were harmed, supposedly. So, I'll let you decide. Development of the brain depends on the visual environment. That pretty much sums up what this study is about. Um, remember, it hasn't always been known that the brain isn't impacted by the visual environment. Uh, it's not just programmed, it's not just a piece of hardware that doesn't change. It's malleable. So, we're talking about brain plasticity. Brains or parts of them can change structure to accommodate new information. So uh, if you imagine a, a tube of toothpaste, squeezing it to one end, you don't have more toothpaste, but it does build towards one end of the toothpaste tube. The brain changes in response to the, man, to the demands placed on it by increasing the cell dendrites and therefore the number of synapses. Um, so it meets what the processing demands. So if you if you require more of your visual cortex, or if you require more uh, of the area of brain for memory, then your your area of brain for memory is going to increase, which we see in the in the Maguire study, which is the contemporary study to this classic study. So Hertz and Spinel, or Spinelli, sorry, um, they did some uh, an old school one in kittens. Uh, pretty harsh um, so it puts these kind of binoculars on the cat and only presents vertical stripes or horizontal stripes to opposite eyes and they found out of the 21 neurons with elongated receptive fields all were monoc monocularly driven so in other words um, the eye that had the vertical stripes only responded to vertical things the, the eye that had horizontal stripes only responded to horizontal things but they did it with two separate eyes in the Hirsch and Spinelli one I'm going to explain that in more depth as we go on because it's very very similar to what um, Blakemore and Cooper are doing so Blakemore and Cooper slightly different in that they allow kittens normal binocular vision so they were allowed to just use their eyes as per normal no funny glasses on but they raised them in these environments of either vertical stripes or horizontal stripes and those are your two conditions they had this head thing on to stop them being able to see their limbs or to rotate their heads um, around so that it was horizontal okay for this cat or if it was horizontal rotate their heads to see it vertically so the aim of the study, to get into the details, was to investigate the development of the primary visual cortex. To find out, so this is where the primary visual cortex is at the back of the brain, find out if some of the properties such as orientation, selectivity, are innate or learned. So, in other words, orientation, selectivity means your ability to spot things in your environment that are of particular orientations. So can you see uh, the horizon or can you see vertical things that are uh, those two are different orientations so can you see the curtains going down in your lounge or can you see the TV across or whatever it is is orientation just innate so can we just pick up these things is it is it hardwired into our visual cortex or are these orientations learned so method lab experiment independent measures design the iv was whether the kittens were reared in the horizontal or vertical environments the dv was their visual motor behavior so in other words their visual response that sorry their motor responses to their visual environment okay so if you uh, if you drag a mouse in front of a kitten, it's going to chase it. Its eyes, its visual, sees it, and its motor chases after it. Okay, so what's their visual motor reactions once they're in an illuminated environment? So out of this one into a more normal environment. Uh, still in the lab, but it was, it was a more normal one, tables and things like that. 
whether the horizontally raised kittens um, could detect vertically aligned objects and if vertically raised kittens could detect horizontally aligned objects. Okay, so I'll show you an example of that in a sec. The sample, the cutest sample within the two years that we look at, studied from birth uh, until this report was compiled, so approximately one year old. I think they did continue testing on the cats actually after that, but I'm not familiar with the research randomly allocated to one of two conditions so two of the kids so uh, randomly allocated to either the horizontal or the vertical um, I'm not sure of the total number of the cats the core guide doesn't give the information either so uh, don't worry about it but what we do know is two of the kittens so one from the horizontal and one from the vertical environment were used to study the neurophysical effects and what that involved and you know animal liberation front look out um, they anesthetized the cats and uh, with nitrous oxide and then they placed neurons into their head you can actually do this with humans as well um, into their visual cortex and the sorry not neurons electrodes into the visual cortex and the electrodes give you a reading of the different neurons around the visual cortex okay and that that is done in brain surgery with humans um, it didn't kill the cats it's uh, something that when they're under anesthetic um, yeah so onto the procedure um, kittens were housed from birth in a completely dark room so as soon as they were born put into a dark room and then from the age of two weeks they were put into a special apparatus of this for an average of about five hours per day the kittens stood on a clear glass platform you can see it there inside the tall cylinder and the entire inner surface was covered with high contrast black and white stripes of either vertical or horizontal there were no corners to its environment no edges to its floors um, so no right angles anywhere on the, on the floor could not even uh, see its body so as I said 130 degrees um, it restricted their view to 130 degrees so they can't look round the corner they can't bend their heads around so they've got to look pretty much straight ahead at these stripes okay um, the researchers do give a nod to ethics here and say the kittens did not seem upset by the monotony of their surroundings sat for long periods inspecting the walls of the tube and it is worth bearing in mind you know cats do spend a lot of time doing nothing and uh, probably wouldn't be overly distressed by this what an interesting question is is you know should you give something a more enriched life not necessarily that it's doing them harm but could they be experiencing things that are better but it's you know it's not overtly unethical the routine was stopped when the kittens were five months old which is well beyond the critical period so the, the critical period of when they think that visual deprivation causes biological impacts um, so they've gone beyond that so they don't need to go any further kittens were then taken for several hours each week from their dark cages to a small well-lit room furnished with tables and chairs their visual reactions were observed and recorded and noted so at seven and a half months two of the kittens one reared in the horizontal room and one in the vertical room were anesthetized so their neurophysiology could be examined what that means is like i was saying before you uh, knock them out essentially with nitrous oxide and you put electrodes into their brains okay findings here we go um, believe it or not, if you were reared in a horizontal world, sorry, in a vertical world, then you would walk into this and fall over, which is what the cats did. They didn't recognize things that were horizontal if they'd been brought up in this world. If you've been brought up in a world of horizontal strikes, however, then vertical stimuli isn't processed, so you wouldn't recognize the chair leg, for example. So, and that's all, all the, the core guide goes into now. So regardless of whether the kittens have been exposed to vertical or horizontal stripes, they're init initially extremely visually impaired. So they were visually impaired in both conditions. Their papillary reflexes were normal. So in other words, their pupils, they, their reflexes were normal. So if it was brighter, the pupil gets smaller, but no visual 
placing when brought up to a table so when you move a cat towards a table it will reach its paws out because it knows it's going to land on the table it reaches for it and grabs onto it uh, like when a cat grabs you by your jumper if you're picking it up uh, but it didn't do that it didn't reach out to things and they had no startled response either if you thrust an object towards a cat it will flinch but they didn't they guided themselves mainly by touch, so it's almost as if they're blind, but you know they're not. But they they use their touch a lot more. They were frightened when they reached the edge of a surface they were standing on, so they realised that they were edge of a surface, but they they didn't build up to that. They were shocked by the fact they'd got to the edge of something. They showed behavioural blindness in that kittens raised in the horizontal, but. Um, environment couldn't detect vertically aligned objects and vice versa which is what i was just explaining only the eyes of the kitten brought up in the vertical stripes followed the rod held vertically and only the eyes of the kitten reared in the horizontal stripes followed the rod if we turned it onto its side kittens quickly recovered from many of the deficiencies within about 10 hours of normal vision um, and they started showing startled responses if you thrust that, those objects towards them. Um, and visual placing, holding their arms out, and would jump with ease from chair to the floor. So they, they are regaining some normal vision. However, some deficits were permanent. So what were those? They always followed moving objects with clumsy, jerky head movements, which cats wouldn't normally do. And they often tried to touch things moving on the other side of the room that was well beyond their reach. So way beyond this kitten's reach, but they might miss the depth perception of it. So the, the depth perception might not have been great. In terms of the neurons, the neurophysiological examination, so that the neurons into the brain, what you would normally see if you um, measured active neurons in the brain, so it's literally when you shove those electrodes into the visual cortex, you should see something that looks like a clock face in terms of uh, how it is um, represented. So it should all be pretty even. And that means that neurons are firing when it sees something in the visual field that's over here or over here or over here or over here. But in these cases, you can see they've got big gaps. So they've got lots of neurons firing around here. And you can probably guess which cats were which. So if you'd been brought up in the horizontal world, you had lots of neurons on these axes, but you had no neurons on these axes. And the opposite if you'd been raised in the vertical world. So you've got lots of activity, the brain, the, the actual neurons there in the brain detecting it. Um, so there was no evidence of severe astigmatation which means blurred vision so that, which could have explained behavioral responses but there wasn't there wasn't blurred vision horizontal plane recognition cells did not fire off in the kitten from the vertical environment and the vertical planes did not fire off in the kitten from the horizontal environment so again when they're showing them things that are horizontal these neurons are not firing off uh, sorry in this cat the neurons for horizontal are not firing off so about 75% of cells in both cats were clearly binocular. Uh, and in almost uh, every way, the responses were like that of a normal kitten. So in other words, they, they, they've got reasonably normal vision uh, in terms of their biology, but they're just missing these big chunks. So here's the sentence. The, distri the, the distributions, so that's this stuff, of the preferred orientation were totally abnormal not one neuron had its optimal orientation within 20 degrees of the inappropriate axis now the inappropriate axis means the opposite axis so if you're a horizontal kitty you don't have any neurons within 20 degrees of this opposite axis to the one that you've been brought up with that's what inappropriate axis means it's just the opposite axis and only 12 within 45 degrees. So that's about 45 degrees there. So you can see some neurons in there for that cat, but not many. And this anisotropy, which means that, that abnormal distribution, was significant with the chi-square test at an extremely significant level. So that's what 0.001% chance of error. So extremely significant. 
uh, or highly significant. No obvious large regions of silent cortex corresponding to the missing cortical values. I'll explain that in the final one minute video.